The Cube. Covering Sapphire Now. Headline sponsored by SAP HANA Cloud, the leader in platform as a service. With support from Console Inc., the cloud internet company. Now, here are your hosts, John Furrier and Peter Burris. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are here live in Orlando, Florida for SiliconANGLE Media's The Cube. It's our flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from noise. Thanks to our sponsors for getting us here. SAP, HANA Cloud Platform, and Console Inc. at Console Cloud. Thanks to the sponsors. I'm John Furrier with Peter Burris. Our next guest is Bobby Vetter, SVP of Global Channels, General Jim's Partner Solution Management for SAP, S4 HANA, and of course, the digital experience, digital enterprise platform, Welcome to theCUBE. Correct. <laughs> Thank That's you. That's a long title. Good this to be with you guys. Really big. Um, well, obviously, you know, Dave Vellante and I, have, over the past many years, have always saw the value of indirect sales through channels, certainly from a, from a cost per order dollar. Great leverage, and in an era where people are buying sales, you see here startups having a, a cost per sale of about $1.30, that's like 30 cents more than the dollar that they're actually getting, creates that kind of bubble bursting situation we're seeing. But so the channel has been very strategic for SAP, yep. certainly over the years. Going back to the big six accounting firms back in the day, so now as, as cloud comes in, there's a thirst and a real demand for agile solutions and the, the partners make a good fit there. So the question is, what's the status of that, the new playbook in channels, global channels, yep. and what are some of your critical success factors? I mean, obviously labor must be hard. What are your challenges and opportunities? Yep. It was actually a pretty good comment. I think, um, you know, if you have a channel, why you have a channel? Um, obviously you can say, yo, you want to lower your cost of sales, but I think that's the wrong view. In my view, the channel adds value. And why is that? Because if you approach customer, we have 70,000 people in SAP, but we're unable to cover the market. If you're in in the countries, in a sub-region of a country, in an industry, in any dimension, you cannot cover the market. It means you cannot uh, uh, approach each customer with direct sales force, with, with even direct approach. So you need to have a, a value-add uh, partner ecosystem that can cover the market. And I'm really talking value-add here and not about cost reduction. So that's my first comment. Therefore, it's important that it channel partner, they need to really understand our strategy, our roadmaps. They need to be enabled, educated to provide this added value. So this is a, a lot of investment you do in a channel. It's not just lowering sales costs, that doesn't work. So you well, need they can add to, value, so to, adding to value. Spend a lot of money to have a value add channel, right? So the value add is key, we know that. Yeah. They're close to the customer. Also, gross profits high on services, and there's a lot of delivery involved. So they're close to their customers, and delivery seems to be the hot trend. What's going on at Sapphire this year on the delivery front that you're seeing that you, that's notable to share with the audience? Yeah, I think first we, our portfolio is growing fast. It's a lot of products we have. Our demand for our products is increasing. Means we need to think about ways how we increase efficiency, not just in selling and pre-sales, but also in, in delivery. Yeah? And the way we do it is um, in many areas with smart packaging. So we package uh, implementation, if you so want, we predefine business processes, intellectual knowledge involved from many customers we know and we package it and we provide to partners. They can build on this and actually deploy much faster based on best practice approaches. So that's what we do, I think, very successfully. Whether you do that on-premise or cloud, every customer deserves um, a fast deployment. Because what you want to do, once you spend the money, you want to have a return. And you want to wait for half a year or one year, you want to have it immediately. Yeah? And the deployment needs to be done uh, on high quality because um, if you run a, a company on mission critical processes, it's got to, it's got to be right. Yeah? You cannot do that in a wrong way. It means um, they need to be highly skilled to do this and adopt to final customer needs. But, and they this also, but they also need to focus on the customer. So going back to this notion yeah. of what a channel does, yeah. you know, the, 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 on a global basis, 
billions of people are going to be coming online in the next few years. Those billions of people are going to be served by hundreds of millions of new businesses, yep. some of which are going to grow and scale to the point where they're SAP prospects, and you're not going to be able to reach them. Yep. But there is an enormous amount of experience in the SAP ecosystem that, as you're saying, you're trying to package up so that implementation becomes simpler, time to value is faster. Yep. But there's also been some tension because many of the folks in whom a lot of that experience has been aggregated, some channel partners, some professional services firms have used their experience not to make it faster, but to make it more complex because it increases billings. How are you going about trying to encourage your channel to really focus on the customer, speed, comprehensiveness, compliance, and to diminish the tendency or the, the, uh, the temptation to just focus on billings? Yeah. I think it's two sides, right? First, the customer behavior has changed. First, the customer and the consumer demands what you need to do. Uh, they have choices, so if you are not able to deliver uh, a solution in the right way, they will simply not choose you, because you make a decision not just of a software or, or a solution, but you also want to know how fast is my return on investment. So they check about this even in a selling phase. You cannot go uh, um, over the board with this. So we need to be uh, in line with what customer expects. So that I think that's a natural thing that happens anyway. It's like a regulatory from the market. But are you what, starting what to capture that information? Is SAP yeah. starting to capture that information we, and we, alert customers to? We measure customer satisfaction at the end and partner satisfaction. And uh, for us that's important. And I, a customer will not be happy if his implementation is not successful or takes too long, goes over budget, or he doesn't get the functionality and the benefits they want to do. So, so we measure this. Yeah, we have KPIs and uh, we even measure on this. Yeah. But I think what we can do is also uh, in the cloud, for example, the, the, the way how it's done in the deployment, it's different than on-premise. So in cloud, you cannot do what you want. You're, you're within a certain boundary, you need to do uh, what the solution um, allows you to do. So in cloud, we see that this uh, behavior of uh, uh, extend the services to extent that you the customer does not agree is not happening or let's say th we have few exceptions but uh, in general uh, cloud um, how do you say cloud addresses these needs the cloud yeah. disciplines disciplines the relationship exactly a bit. and we try to do the same for on premise that we also apply these packages um, to partners even on premise and we're going to certify them on their solution. So they, they pre-build solution for industry. We are in 26 industries. And what we do is we, we, we give them, the, let's say, the raw material of best practices. And then what they do, they add their own IP for the country, for the specific industry. They complete the solution and go to market with it. And this speeds up, obviously, um, deployment, but also increases quality. And the customization on that is off the charts because you now have someone on the front lines serving the customer in a unique way with differentiated yes. products. Yes, and I can tell you this, uh, what we call best practices, are re really frequently used by partners and I, I had about six meetings already and I would say five out of six are using these packages for go-to-market. So, so reference is, implementations, reference architectures, and technology, not just yeah how-to guides, right? Yeah, this you, is actual what, what real you tech. do is you package intellectual property, how you sell and deploy a solution, and you bundle it, and you make it available. All right, so take us through the top, top conversations you're having with partners. You mentioned you're talking to people here. They usually get excited about one thing, it's usually around monetization and value. What's the big top three conversations that you're involved with here at Sapphire this year? I think uh, one big topic is S for HANA. Uh, it's our digital core, uh, our ERP digital core. Uh, this is really important because we're changing the architecture of, uh, of ERP to, um, as you know, on HANA means we use a, a column-based um, in-memory architecture that allows us to simplify an ERP on a technical level. Uh, 
we can simplify as well the user experience on top. We make role-specific, nice-looking uh, screens, flexible screens that you can use on any device, whether you're on iPhone here or any mobile device or you're using a laptop, right? It's, it's adjusts to the size of the screen. Uh, it provides not just transactional information, it also adds analytical information. I think that's key. If you look how people work today, they need much more analytical information. But the thing is, it needs to be content or context relevant, I would say, and they want to have it real time. Because you don't want to, when you transact, you don't want to wait for half an hour to get the analytical information. So it needs to be con contextual right, real time, and even you need to have advanced analytics on your screen if you need to resolve a situation on flight. And this new S4 HANA architecture does exactly this. What's the biggest uh, thing that on your to-do list for your job to take this to market? Because is it um, training, is it marketing, is it social, is it assets, having assets out there? I mean, what, what's on your, your hot yeah. list of things that you need so that you can get the channel humming? Yeah, I think first, um, we have a very long relationship with our channel partners, so we know our partners. I have an organization in place that takes care of partners from a solution perspective, and we have this setup is in each region, so they know their partners. So what we do normally, let's take S4 HANA as an example. What we do is first, we explain the strategy and the roadmap. Yeah? That gives you the overarching idea of what we want to do. Gives you the context why we rebuild a solution. What are the added value areas of a solution? And we also give them impact on uh, where they need to change skills or, or experience. So first we explain this. The second is then that we make sure the partners are ready for selling and pre-sales, that they can articulate a value proposition and that they can demo a, a, a solution. That's the point number two. And then for the consultants, we learn them how to build packaging and extend the packaging. That's what I just explained. And another important thing is we have a lot of what we call existing customers. So they learn how to convert existing customer to S4 HANA. Yeah. This is mainly the basic thing. And then what we look is when we interact with the partner, we package an enablement and make it available in form for scalable learning platforms. These are cloud-based uh, learning platforms. You can uh, register, you go in and you have curriculums and you can learn on the fly when you have time, yep. uh, you learn. And you also can um, um, uh, um, enter into learning rooms where you not just learn, but you interact with experts who can do Q&As. So digital do. assets. Digital, it's dig digitalized, yes. In digital business experience, you need to also approach enablement in a digital yeah. way. Yeah. But you know, I mean, I, I, I know, you know, and I imagine you know that sales guys, for example, sales guys learn from other sales guys. Yeah. Partners learn from other partners. Yeah. Are you starting to make it possible for partners to have partner-to-partner -partner experiences, go to market, learn from each other, work from each other, take each other's yeah. templates, share intellectual property, all around and in the, within the umbrella of uh, you know, the, the HANA ecosystem? That's a very good input. I think um, what we do is, in the countries or by region, we do uh, so-called uh, partner executive councils, where we bring partner together, we select a few topics, and then we discuss with the partners how we how we best approach it together. And the partners share information; uh, they're, they're willing to share. We also teach them, obviously, that nobody wants to be different than the others. How you differentiate? Yeah. So how we can extend the solution yet your own IP. Yeah, this is a, a major thing where we're, we're at well yeah. teaching. They all want to be different because they kind of compete, and you, if you will. Of course, yeah. yeah. They compete, but they share. Yeah, they have and to share. They share, they help each other sometimes. Sometimes they're in competition, but let's just remind my, my competition, obviously, is other vendors. That's why I try to, to talk to partner, hey, let's, 
work let's together. Let's put it together. Let's help each other because the portfolio is so broad. Nobody can cover all aspects of our portfolio. Yeah. So Department. we have specialization. For example, industry. If you go discrete manufacturing, automotive, or healthcare, utility, or banking, that's completely different. Yeah. You cannot do everything. So we have normally in our approach in industry, driven go to market, and if uh, there are opportunities here, and they're not within your industry, then partners sometimes they exchange this kind of information. Bobby, thanks so much for coming on theCUBE and sharing your perspective and insight. Appreciate it, thank you uh, for thank coming you. on theCUBE. Here at uh, Sapphire Silicon Angle Media is theCUBE. I'm John Furrier with Peter Burris. We're with Bobby Vetter, SVP of Global Channels, and among other things, digital enterprise platform solutions and, <laughs> and other things. Congratulations, got a big job and, and a great opportunity for channels. Uh, the cloud is a great opportunity to add value. This is theCUBE, we're trying to do our part adding value here, live at SAP Sapphire. You're watching theCUBE. Thank you very much. There'll be millions of people in the near future that are, want to be involved in their own personal well-being and in wellness. Nobody wants to age in a way that we're bound to a chair or a bed. And I think being able to manage one's health is about keeping track of diet effect, exercise effects, sleep effects. And learn how to improve your life and how to be healthy longer 